Hello and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. The company Eaton has come up here a few times. For example, in the past we learned about their power defense circuit breakers used in industrial facilities. For this video, we are going to learn about industrial control by going on a field trip. And thanks to the magic of video editing, here we are! This trailer is Eaton's Industrial Control Mobile Showcase. Inside, it is packed with demos of motor controllers, protection devices, material handling components, and lots and lots of industrial controls. It's probably where they got the name for the truck. Hey, I'm James. Hey, Mike Kaminsky. Hey, Mike, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming by. You bet. So I heard you have all kinds of cool stuff to show. I do, why don't we go take a look? Let's get started. First up on the tour is a demo of their flagship variable frequency drives. So in this application, you have two different pumps and two different drives. That we have this pump coming through here, this pump coming through here, this driver on that pump, and this mm -hmm. driver on that pump. And they will talk to each other via Modbus. So here, we turn on our demo and open our valve a little bit. You can see this drive will find its level to run at a steady pressure. But if we start opening our valve a little bit and we need to pick up the pressure, the drive will ramp at speed. Okay. And as we ramp more and more, this drive can't keep up with this pump. It will tell this other pump, hey, we need help running this to a certain pressure. And so now these are both running at a certain uh, frequency to keep the pressure steady. As we start closing our valve, we can see that drive keeps slowing down and eventually it will just shut off and go back to one drive and one pump. So within a building, where would this kind of pump system be located? So this would be in your mechanical rooms, either running like your chilled water, your hot water, or your just your public water. Cool. Okay, so first, what's MCC? MCC is Motor Control Center, so it's a centralized point where you can have a bunch of motor control. Okay, can you give me like a one sentence? What's the difference between the types of controls? Maybe? Sure, so the VFD, you can change the speed of your motor. The electromechanical starter just starts across the line full speed. Vacuum contact or similar deal, but it breaks the, the circuit via vacuum. And the soft starter ramps up and ramps down, but you don't have speed control. What's an example where you have a motor control where you don't care about the speed? So you don't get the water hammer effect of just shutting off a pump. Okay, now I have to ask, what's the water hammer effect? So basically, picture you have water flowing through a pipe and you just stop that water flow. It's just going to run right into it and it's going to burst pipes, wreck stuff in your system. And that's bad. It, it would be bad. Yeah. Okay. The C445 motor management relay can help locate ground faults in high resistance grounded or HRG systems when used with a pulser. Mike sets up the next demo and explains how this works in a facility. So typically in an HRG system, and you have a pulser in your circuit, you're sending the pulse back to the ground and you have to go isolate all your circuits and you have to put your, your meter on the conduit for all your different circuits mm -hmm. and try to figure out where that, that ground fault is, which in a large facility, that could take days to figure it out. So you can see here, we, we put the ground fault on unit three and now it says ground fault pulse detected here. Okay. It saves you a ton of time trying to track down where that ground fault is. Right, okay. Right next to the MCC were these tubes filled with glycol and our next demo. So the C445 also has a logic engine built into it. Okay. And so we can run basically a micro PLC. We can open and close our valves and run the motor via this logic engine. Okay. Before moving on, I had to ask about this bright screen. So this is our dashboard, getting all of our motor data from our C445 overloads that we have in this MCC. Using my excellent powers of perception, I have a feeling this has something to do with HVAC drives. You are correct. So this is our DH1, which is similar to the DG1, but it's an HVAC specific drive. How does it differ? So this one can only spin a variable torque load, so a fan or a pump. I noticed there were two drives, so I asked Mike why. So you'll see it bypass in a lot of applications, but having another drive in there is really just for critical applications, such as hospital air handlers okay. or items like that. Okay. So we actually have a demo here to show you what happens in the event of a lightning strike. We started our fan on VFD1. So you can see we have VFD1 full, but VFD2 picked up the load and continues to spin the fan. Thanks. 
So these also look like HVAC things. What do we have over here? So here we have our bypass VFD. It's the DH1 like we had in the redundant drive. Do they all come in this fancy clear container? No, normally this is white. This is letting you sh see everything that's inside the enclosure. Okay. I tried to explain how a case like this could appeal to the gamer market, but Mike still said no. I see here a conveyor belt. What do we got going on? So this kind of shows some of our solutions that we have for material handling. Kind of highlights our photo sensors that we have, obviously motor control that we have on the wall over there, our pilot devices, and then everything runs on our smart wire, which you can see here on the pilot devices, reduces the installation and wiring. This control panel here has smart wire in it, and it's a lot less wiring than our control panel that we have over here. So compared to those two, what's the installation time difference? It's about a 70% reduction in installation time, a lot less terminating of wires and a lot less cutting of wires. So here we can run our conveyor demo. These photo sensors are figuring out where the packages are on the conveyor belt. So this package will get down to the end, then we'll stage these next two, it will grab one of them and wait for it to come down to the end before it sends the last package on the conveyor. And then what happens when you reset it? Yeah! Sometimes it is the little things that make me smile. Our last stop on the tour was this wall of controls. They range from basic busman fuses, overcurrent protection, and cost-effective starters. Then we looked at more advanced controls like a miniature circuit breaker, a solid-state relay, and a combination starter with disconnect. And then we looked at the intelligent solutions. And so this all can communicate with the PLC by different communication protocols, whether it be Modbus, Ethernet IP, Profi bus, anything like that. Mike shows me an across-the-line starter, a soft starter, a DM1, which is like the DG1 from earlier, but made to go into OEM equipment. And then I recognize this guy. Isn't that a power defense? That is a power defense breaker, and it has our PXR25 trip unit, which is our high-end trip unit, and it communicates out Modbus, so we're getting all the information from the breaker out on this HMI. All right, well, thank you so much for going through all of the demos, Mike. I really appreciate your time, and thank you for answering all of my questions. Yeah, thanks for coming on by. Thanks for taking a look at all of our cool stuff, and uh, until next time. You bet. Thanks a lot. Overall, I had a great time pushing all the buttons, but I did not cover everything in this video. For a full tour, check a link below to that on the Elman 14 community. Also, let me know if you saw anything you thought was cool or if you have questions about Eaton's Industrial Control Mobile Showcase. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Elman 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.